Hi, my name is Eno Hernandez, and I'm an application engineer here at Hawker Systems. Today we're going to talk about how it is that we get started in weldments. I went ahead and designed a carport since I just moved into a house that has no garage. I actually designed it inside a 3D sketch and I put it accordingly to the dimensions where my car can fit into it. Now that I have that, I have the option to either use a sweep feature, but there's just going to be certain things that I won't be able to do, such as being able to create miter edges, do corner treatments, so the solution to that would be to use weldments. To access my weldments, all I do is just right click here on any one of the tabs on the command manager and click where it says weldments. Now that it's active, I can either just create a 3D sketch from there, which I won't be doing, but I can use the weldment, which is going to put it in weldment mode. Here it makes sure that any body that's used will not be merged, so the merge result will be unchecked. And also instead of a solid bodies folder, we will have a cut list that keeps track of all the tubes that we're going to be using. So go ahead and click on weldment. Now I can click on structural member, but before that, in case you don't have the actual structural members, you can go into the design library inside the task pane. From the SOLIDWORKS content, you can open it and click here where it says the weldments folder and select ANSI inch. You can use BSI, CISC, and this contains structures already made accordingly to that standard. To download them, we just hit control and hit left click. And once we do that, what's going to happen is that it will download a zip file and you can put it on the correct folder that you're referencing. I already went ahead and grabbed the ANSI inch and the ISO. So again, just to make sure, I click here on Options, go to System Options, click on File Locations, and then I'll go to the filter and adjust it so that I can only see the Weldman profiles. And then I have correct location where it's going to be referenced. So I'll click OK. So now I'll click on the Structural Member. And again, the standard, I can either use ISO and NC inch. I went ahead and modified the name so it doesn't get pick up another folder. So I go ahead and select NC inch. Then the type is going to be called aluminum round tube. So there it is. For the size, I can either use previous ones that I've selected or I can scroll down and click on 1.25, the outer diameter, which is the tube has with the wall thickness of 0.125. And now I can begin to actually add the groups. Now the rule is that when we add our groups, they either have to be in a closed shape, be parallel to each other, and in case they don't meet those requirements, then just select them individually and create new groups. So I'll start off with the rectangle. So here I start with my first one. So again, you'll notice that the 2D sketch, and of course I could have used the 2D sketch to do this as well, but all these sketch entities are just placeholders because SOLIDWORKS doing all the work to actually put it in there without me having to create the profile or anything for it. Now if I zoom in here you'll notice that the corner treatment is a miter edge. I can change it to an end butt and flip the location. I'll leave it as a miter edge and I can also add a gap. I'll continue to add the rest of the other sketch entities in this rectangle. There's nothing else I can add right so I'll click new group and I'm going to add sketch entities that are at an angle. So this one here, this one there. Again, if I try to click over here, it's not going to add them. So I have to start a new group. And again, they're going to be mitered. I'll leave that corner treatment on there. And I'm going to select now these two angled sketch entities. Again, I'll click on the next group. So it's going to be this top tube here. Click on the next group. And now I'm just going to add the legs that are all parallel to each other. So now I can click OK and all the members have been added. Now if I zoom into a corner and maybe I want to rearrange it, remember based on that trim order, the first one was a rectangle, then everything else was cut around there, right? The second one is this one, so it's cut around the rectangle, then the leg is also being cut around that rectangle. I can change that trim order just by going back and right clicking, editing that feature of the Weltman members. And all I have to do, if you've noticed, we've had those little circles there. So I click on them and then I can go and select. So here I have my second trim order. Let's say I make it go back to the first one. And if we zoom in, we can see how the cut has been changed. So for now, I'll leave it as it is. Again, I can change this, the third group and change the order to the first one. And we can see how it's been cut. I can click OK to accept this corner treatment, click OK to exit. 
and now see how it goes around it now I just want to make sure that it's not going into it it's okay it's perfect I can do the same for this top one let me zoom out there so we can see that better so just in case I want to further trim this so that nothing's touching I can always go ahead and use what's called the trim extend from here I can add a miter edge I can use an end butt again and inverse the direction of it for now this is the body that will be trimming and then I select the trimming body so it'll be the bodies here at the rectangle so that body this body there and see how now that corner is no longer going into there and it's it's perfect I can add a well gap if I want to at an eighth I'll leave it as it is and then just click OK and now I've adjusted it so now see how it's been cut the last thing that I want to do here is I want to add a weld bead so I can click here on weld bead again inside my woman's profile and from here I can either use weld geometry or I can use a weld path I'll go ahead and put this is just going to be a fillet weld bead and the size is going to be an eighth and I'll just put it here so there I've added one weld bead let's see if I can add one here perfect so now after adding that what I'm gonna do is I can click OK and I can also define the weld symbol if I like using the anti weld symbol box and have access to change the contours let people know that this might be flat convince or concave change the finishing method right let them know and of course put my weld symbols here we're gonna leave it at fillet so I'll just click OK then I can click OK one more time and there are the welds that I just added and we can also see the weld symbol there for fillet bead at an eighth now I'm going to continue doing this for the rest of the corners so we can see how easy it is to actually be able to grab an existing sketch and without us having to extrude anything we use this as a placement holder go into the weld mints let SOLIDWORKS auto populate using the correct members that we wanted here was 1.25 outer diameter with 0.125 wall thickness for this aluminum round tubing I already had my material and now I can continue to finish this if you have any tips and tricks let us know in the comment section go ahead and give us a like and subscribe thank you again